Hello, RAP students. This is Dr. Smith here again. We're going to talk about chemical experiments. So today we're going to tie together my very first um, acid or base experiment to this experiment. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, kind of explain what we're going to do, and then we'll go through after what's going on um, with this reaction, okay? Always remember, lab coat, if you want to use an apron, that's fine, because today we're using household products. I always try to find ways for you to use household products so you don't have to go out and buy anything really expensive, okay? And don't forget, if you aren't wearing glasses, you probably want to put some goggles on. If you have glasses, it's fine to just wear your glasses for now, but in a true chemical experiment with chemicals that could actually um, cause damage to you in some way, or shape, or form, um, you would need to put on goggles that go over your glasses. They do have them, so um, you can do that. Um, just remember, we're going to work with vinegar today. So do you want vinegar in your eye too? So you may want to put some goggles on anyway. And I'm sure that's not fun to have vinegar in your eye. So, <laughs> so we're going to start with an empty bottle, and I have one here. I'm going to get a balloon and fill it up with baking soda, okay? So I'm going to fill it with a tablespoon and a half. Actually, let me use it. I'm going to do a teaspoon and a half. We're going to try to keep it not so um, grand today. Um, a tablespoon and a half. I have a tablespoon here, and I have already poured my baking soda into another container just because that, that's easier for me. I'm going to take this funnel, since I have a funnel, even if you don't have funnels and you think it would be better, you could go to the dollar store and get like a set for a dollar. So um, go, or it doesn't have to be a dollar store, but more than likely you can find one pretty cheap if you, didn't, if you want to pay more than a dollar. So let's see here. Go to like halfway of this teaspoon, like that. And make sure that you tap your funnel. Just make sure that you get all of that baking soda as much as you can inside the balloon. Okay? And I'm going to kind of try and um, close it up a little bit like that just so it stays like it's supposed to. It doesn't always work, but I try. I'm going to make sure I rinse my tablespoon off just in case I need it again. If you have um, the substance, that you used before on it, it could mess up your experiment. So clean it before you use it again. Now I'm going to take, since all I have is apple cider vinegar at home, I'm going to put 10 tablespoons of apple cider vinegar into this um, measuring cup. And then I'm going to um, pour it into the bottle. So I think there's something on this. Let me make sure it's good and clean. Ten tablespoons. One, two, three. Four, five, let me move this away before I make a reaction that I'm not trying to make. Six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, kind of keep it clean as you go along and you don't have to worry about it later. I'm gonna set that to the side. Now, I'm gonna take this vinegar and I'm using all of this stuff because I like to stay, keep my area as clean as I possibly can. I'm gonna pour it into the bottle 
this apple cider vinegar. If you have vinegar, you can use regular vinegar instead. Okay, now remember, I had the balloon that had baking soda in it. And I kind of dialed back the baking soda just a little bit so that would, um, we wouldn't have too big of a reaction. And I'm going to put, I'm going to try to keep it closed and put the balloon on the bottle at the same time. And, and now you can get ready for a reaction, okay? I'm going to slowly undo it. Look at that, we've inflated a balloon. The more product, the more it inflates. It may burst, I don't know. It's pretty cool, right? So if you wanted to, you could add, you could add a colored dye to this and then you could pop the balloon because what's happening here is that you created a reaction that had carbon dioxide created, a gas. The gas is filling up the balloon. That's what's, that's what's holding it together right there. See, it's, it's, it's tight. So if you don't believe it, or you just want it to make it really, really clear what's happening, if you had dye added, you could possibly pop that balloon and see that color come out as a gas. For me, it's enough when I take the balloon off that I feel all the gas. You may even be able to hear it sometimes. So I'm gonna take it off. I'm gonna try not to put my eye out. That's why I have on glasses. That's a good reason to wear goggles. Let's see if I can get it off. Okay, maybe not. Here we go, I got it. So when you take it off, you should be able to feel the gas. Having a hard time. <coughs> See, and you hear it too. That was because carbon dioxide was inside. Pretty cool, right? So now we get to talk about what actually happened, the um, actual science of it, okay? So here I go to the board. Because if you saw my first um, experiment, acid or base, you know that vinegar is an acid and baking soda is a base. And so we're going to, we created an acid base reaction. So I'm going to write it up here. So we took vinegar, which is an acid. And we added it to baking soda. Which is a base. And out of that, we got um, the main thing that we want to be concerned about right now is the carbon dioxide. There's, there are other things that came out too, but we're gonna talk about it. So let's go back here. Vinegar, we had vinegar as a liquid. We had baking soda as a solid. And we had carbon dioxide as a gas, okay? And there were other things that came out in this one, such as um, there's a, a salty kind of, I wouldn't say salt waterish type of product that came out. I don't want to give you the name. It might be a little too, um, a bit too much right now, but also water came out of it. So the biggest thing here, it's not the only thing, but it's the thing that um, caused the balloon to blow up. We had a gas that came out of it, okay? 
So let's see if we can write this up here. I want to see as I write this if you all can remember what each letter stands for. So our C stood for carbon, H, hydrogen, the O's are oxygen, and another hydrogen. The Na is sodium, H is hydrogen, C is carbon, and the O is oxygen. And on this end, carbon and oxygen, okay? So here's one that you should try to remember, carbon dioxide, because we breathe it out. That's, you know, that's something that a lot of people may know, if, even if they're not into chemistry or anything like that. They usually, you know, get that. Just remember that di means two. That may help you, okay? Remember, you can look at these videos as often as you like. <laughs> you don't have to try and get it all at one time, okay? So when you're doing a reaction like this, each chemical reaction has what's called a reactant Let me put that in as a square so that it, it looks different from everything else. And this is also a reactant. Let me. Reactants are pretty much whatever you start out with in the beginning. Okay? And then you get products. That's what comes in the end. And so I put the S on there. Because remember, there's other things that came out of this reaction. We were just focused on the carbon dioxide, which made the gas that made the balloon expand. So in this chemical reaction, you start it with reactants, the vinegar and the baking soda. And their atoms rearranged, atoms are, um, things within a, a molecule, an element. You don't have to get so um, caught up in that right now. But just know that they rearrange. They looked one way and they rearranged somehow to come up with products. And the one that we focused on, there were actually three different products that came out of it. Um, but we're focused on the carbon dioxide because that made the balloon blow up. Okay, so remember, that um, a chemical reaction must have reactants in order to get products, okay? And in this case, we had an acid and a base together. Now, if you aren't sure about um, a chemical reaction, if you had a chemical reaction, here are some of the things that will um, give you clues as to whether you did have one. They're not always indicators for um, chemical reactions, but a lot of the times they are. One is going to be that there's formation of gas. And that we had with the carbon dioxide. Then there's a color change. Color change may not always mean um, chemical reaction, but you may be able to go by that. So in my very first experiment, acids and bases, um, acid or base, we did have a chemical change. And um, you can have um, a formation of precipitate and you're like what is precipitate that's just like if you have liquids you start out with liquids and at the end you have some kind of um, solid formed at the end it didn't start that way did it 
No. So now you have this solid that's um, formed and that should tell you that you have a chemical reaction. It's just like we, when we say something about precipitation and weather, um, precipitation can be rain, sleet, snow, hail, you know, so that, those kinds of things. And the last one is formation of light and heat. We didn't have that here, of course. We were not doing anything that, um, that um, difficult, but uh, we did have the formation of gas. Um, so I hope today that you had a good understanding of the um, reaction that happened here. Hopefully you understand that we took an acid and base and put it together and gas came out of it. And um, that we changed actually from liquid and solid and got some gas out of it. So different um, phases of matter, we were able to do that. Um, hopefully you've seen this before. If you haven't, that's fine. This starts a, a conversation with your teacher, especially when you're doing science. They will be glad to hear you talk about these type things. And I'm sure they could give you some um, guidance on what you can read or, or different resources that you can use to find out more if you're really interested. And if you are um, looking to do more of this, don't forget the chemistry sets that you can find if you are able to do that. Um, just understand that some of them have an age requirement on them because they are actual um, chemicals that could harm you and that you need to have an adult around when you're doing um, the experiments. So I hope you got a lot out of this and you have fun blowing up balloons um, however many times you want because just look I've done that and I still have plenty that I can use to blow up another balloon. So um, I hope you enjoyed this and share it with some other people but until next time remember it's important to exercise your mind as well as your body and I look forward to seeing you again.